Today I'm going to show you how to grow a chemical garden using nothing but sodium silicate and some metal salts. To get started, I first needed to make some sodium silicate, as it isn't something I usually keep on hand. This can be done fairly easily by dissolving a source of silicon dioxide in sodium hydroxide, and my source of silicon dioxide here was crystal kitty litter. To that end, I went ahead and dumped 60 grams of silicon dioxide into a beaker followed by 30 or so grams of sodium hydroxide. I gave the mixture a little stir and then added a bit of water which instantly initiated a violent reaction. The fumes here are highly caustic, so I'd recommend only doing this outdoors or in a place with good ventilation. Alternatively, dissolving the sodium hydroxide in water before adding the silicon dioxide would probably have made this reaction a lot less violent. Anyway, once it calmed down a bit, I added a bit more water until I had added a total of 100 milliliters. I then boiled the mixture, giving it the occasional stir until all the kitty litter was completely dissolved. At this point, I had a concentrated solution of sodium silicate, which is an extremely versatile chemical more commonly called water glass. As a side note, this process will probably damage your glassware, as hot metal alkalis tend to dissolve glass very slowly. Um, I have dedicated glassware that I use for this, so if you don't want your nice glass getting damaged, I would recommend doing the same. Anyway, this was then poured into 800 milliliters of water to dilute it to an appropriate concentration for this reaction, which gave a very cool effect due to the huge density difference between the two liquids. Once the solution was thoroughly mixed, the hard part was done, and it was time to grow my chemical garden. For the next step, all you really need are some transition metal salts, and I chose to first try iron 2 sulfate, copper sulfate, copper chloride, cobalt chloride, and tetraamine cobalt chloride. Once you've decided what salts you're going to use, all you have to do is select a few crystals and carefully add them to the dilute solution of sodium silicate. I wanted to first try each of these salts at a test tube scale before committing to using any of them in mass, as different salts will form very different looking growths. A big and fairly obvious part of this difference is color. Copper sulfate will form blue growths, copper chloride will form green. Iron sulfate is more of a sickly green, while iron chloride is a rust orange. Cobalt is usually dark blue, chromium is dark green, nickel is lime green, and zinc and aluminum are white. I haven't tried vanadium or manganese, but I'd expect those to maybe be able to form some pretty neat colors as well. Now with color aside, the other big difference is the structure of the growth itself. And while they tend to form branching stalagmites, there is a good deal of variation on how these can look. For example, if you look at any of my samples here, Copper chloride and sulfate tended to form fewer stalactites that were each fairly long and durable. Iron sulfate, on the other hand, tended to form ultra-fine stalactites that were almost hair-like and resembled asbestos in a way. Eventually, the iron crystals formed little orange nodules at the tips of the growths as the iron 2 oxidized to iron 3. The cobalt chloride seemed to form by far the shortest crystals, and they formed so quickly I wasn't really able to capture most of their growth on camera. These stalactites were a deep blue and looked more like growing tendrils than stalactites. The cobalt complex didn't really grow at all and was somewhat disappointing. I haven't done this enough times to say for certain, but it seems as though the structure of the growths is related to the solubility of the salt used and possibly related to whether the specific salt is capable of forming hydrates. Now, the reason metal stalactites form in the sodium silicate solution is because as soon as the soluble salt is immersed in solution, it slowly begins to dissolve. However, as soon as it does, it'll instantly react with the silicate in the solution to form an insoluble silicate mineral shell. The result is upward and potentially outward growth that eventually begins to look biological, and thus a chemical garden. Anyway, looking at all my samples, I really liked how they all looked with the exception of the cobalt ammonium complex salt. Because of the very limited growth of the cobalt chloride and the general expense of cobalt, as well as its systemic toxicity, I decided to eliminate the cobalt salts from my big garden. At this point, to make my full-size garden, all I do now is take crystals of my selected salts and toss them into my one liter beaker of dilute sodium silicate and watch them grow. It took about two days for the garden to reach its maximum size, with the rate of growth dropping off exponentially after only about three hours. That said, I didn't get a time lapse of the whole thing, but I got enough that you can somewhat watch it happen. One thing I found very interesting about this larger scale garden with multiple different salts present at once is that eventually different metal silicates began growing out and interacting with each other to form new unique colors and shapes. 
This made me suddenly realize that this fun little demonstration had far more potential than I initially thought, and theoretically you could make several different modifications to the initial conditions to grow literally countless silicate minerals. Just uh, spitballing off the dome here, but for example, you could add borax to make borosilicate growths. You could also add different alkali or alkaline earth metals such as lithium, calcium, magnesium, barium, or even strontium to make more complex crystals. Uh, for color, you could add transition metals such as the obvious copper, iron, cobalt, um, or chromium. You could use vanadium, manganese, zirconium, yttrium, really anything you could think of. If you really think about it, um, since most naturally occurring silicate minerals are aluminum based, using aluminum sulfate or fluoride could be a very interesting salt base in every run, while the silicate solution itself is manipulated instead. I might do a whole video on this if there's any interest, and honestly I might just do it regardless because it seems like it could be pretty neat, even though it wasn't the uh, initial, you know, intention here. In any case, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, um, I usually say Instagram, but I don't update it ever, um, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.